What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful here. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Larry D. Whether you're familiar with him or not, uh, instrumental to this Kentucky independent wrestling scene, so uh, near and dear to my heart as well. He's been wrestling for Impact for the last couple of years until he asked for his release over the past couple of weeks as his tag team partner Ace Romero did uh, a couple months back. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It's worth going and hunting down the previous interview, which will be in the description below. But like I said, the, the scene of independent wrestling in Kentucky would not exist to the degree in which it does without him. And this show would not exist to the degree it does without our friends at NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can save 70% on your order and get an additional month. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee if NordVPN is not for you. There is no risk whatsoever. If you're traveling like I do, uh, you can avoid region blocked shows. You can avoid missing the shows that are in your home area when you're traveling. Also, if you're at an airport or restaurant on those public Wi Fi's, uh, that can be kind of dangerous. NordVPN protects you, gives you peace of mind while you're traveling. Your internet traffic is routed through a secure encrypted tunnel that protects your data and privacy, and you can use it up on, on up to six devices rather laptop, phone, iPad, router, smart TV, all kinds of different things. It is the fastest VPN in the world. You can even subscribe to things like Netflix and BT Sport at a significantly reduced rate. It ends up paying for itself. So check out NordVPN.com slash Fightful and enjoy our interview. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful.com. Here with a name you know. Last time we interviewed Larry D was just before the pandemic. And Man. Man, that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Does. It does. Well, it's kind of like we're just living and going in the in the pandemic and, and making way a little by little, though. Man, so the last time I spoke with you, I believe it was the, the fall of 2019. And I remember that day for, for many reasons. I was coming to your show. I was interviewing yourself. I was interviewing Chris Michaels. I was supposed to interview Tracy Smothers, right. the late Tracy Smothers. We have since learned, unfortunately, like that's when he was being diagnosed with, with unfortunately, what took him. Um, I know that he was he was going to teach your students and all that. Uh, maybe before we even get into that, share a few memories of Tracy Smothers. I know he's oh, very important to you. Tracy Smothers is huge to me. I feel that Tracy Smothers taught me uh, how to fire a crowd up, how to how to piss them off, and how to cool them down. <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, I, I got to grow up watching Tracy Smothers in Georgetown. So uh, from from there, I watched him on WCW. ECW and Smoky Mountain and uh, even better is that I got to share a locker room with him and share a ring with him and, and get to know him as a person and, and he would always pass advice on and, and one thing that I love about Tracy Smothers is that he tried to watch every match on the card and he tried to always always say hey don't do this there's no need for that or hey you should do this next time and he's always helpful so I try to I try to do a little bit of that myself probably probably not as good as old <laughs> Tracy but I tried to try my very best always remember Tracy I mean um, unfortunately we couldn't do that interview that day and we didn't learn about his diagnosis for several weeks right but I saw him a couple weeks later at WrestleCade and he did a run-in on my Mikey Whipwreck interview he's like I told you I'd get you one <laughs> I told you I'd get you one that yeah. counts yeah, he was great smothers. and I mean like I said so many things have changed you spent the last couple of years with yeah. Impact Wrestling like mere weeks after we spoke right you were there, and I believe you were embracing Scott Demore in the middle of, of course. the ring. Yeah, it was unex completely unexpected. Uh, it was the best moment of my wrestling career. Uh, it was my my friends were there, my family was there, uh, my wife. You know, they uh, we were wrestling at the Wrestling Revolver mm -hmm. in Dayton, Ohio, and you know, it was no surrender, and and nothing pre-planned. There was no like, hey, I'm going to get in the ring after none of that, uh, and it was complete mm -hmm. genuine. And I'll never forget that. It, it's the day that my life changed in the professional wrestling business for the better, for sure. So you had no idea. Because, I, I mean, I had people say, oh, is that why you interviewed him? I was like, no. I don't think he knew, much less me. Absolutely. Had completely <laughs> oblivious to the situation that I was, I was getting ready to have a contract offered to me. Uh, and, and caught off guard in the best way ever. So was that a no-brainer for you? Because I remember you telling me, I can't remember the specific number of dates, but when I heard the number of dates you were already working at that point, I was like, 
how do you have the time? Well, the thing is, is that I made time. You yeah. know, I, I was, a, I had my wife and I have four children and uh, I was, I was a welder, you know, I was working 40 and 50 hours per week traveling. And this is how my week went. I would, I would be off Monday, but I would work my shoot job. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I would train wrestling. Wednesday, I would work, you know, eight to 10 hours a day anyway, off at three o'clock in the vehicle at 345 on my way to Dayton, Ohio uh, by four o'clock, wrestle the Rockstar Pro Show, back home by 1 a.m., back up by 5 a.m., back off by three in the vehicle to go to Ian Rotten's on Thursday, back home, uh, one, five o'clock in the morning, uh, shoot job, off at one, down to St. Louis or wherever I'm going. Sometimes I would even work uh, my 40 hours the week early mm -hmm. so that I have Friday off to drive to Iowa. So I might get off at eight o'clock that night, drive to Iowa that morning, wrestle, drive to Alabama Saturday, back to PTW on Sunday and train wrestling, run operate wrestling and have Monday off and back to work. How much time were you able to shave off those St. Louis trips by the time you were, you were doing them? Because my buddy drove from Lexington to there right. on a whim. Yeah. And it said like, oh, it'll be five hours. He got yeah. there in like 4.15. We usually get there about 4.15, <laughs> four and a half, I would say. But yeah, it's usually, it's around 5.25. Now the smaller compact cars are much easier <laughs> to get there. It just takes you two tanks. So you got that offer from Impact Wrestling. How did that affect your schedule in those first few months? Because as we all know, once February, March hit, everybody's schedule got impacted. Of course, yes, it, it, it impacted me. And, you know, when I, when I first got signed, I was still welding. And then for about eight months from there, um, you know, my wife, my wife was, is really good at a job that she does. She does, she works for Humana. And she's very, very, very talented. And, and I just had, you know, I trust in her. And, and, and I feel that I needed to make the jump. You know, there was a voice in my head coming back from Wrestle House, to be honest with you, that said, hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta leave your job now. Because my body was getting so beat up from mm -hmm. standing on the concrete floor to wrestling and the travel and, and, and having to, you know, everything back and forth and just on the way back, it was, I was making more money uh, wrestling at that point, thankfully, uh, than I was to stand 40 hours on co concrete floor. And my wife was right by my side as always, and she stepped right up and she she took some funds maybe that we thought we would lose. And and you know we're just a team, man. And I can't I can't be more happy and more blessed to have Paige Jones by my side. I can tell you right now, looking at you, you look ten years younger right now than you did in 2019 <laughs> when I saw you. Yeah, that. yeah, I mean, I'd say I've had a lot more time to take care of myself, and and that's the most important thing, not only physically but mentally as well. And and you know it. It took me to a, to a part of my life that I thought there would be a decision that I would never make or have to make that I believe embedded on myself enough that, yeah, I, I made the decision and choice to, to you know, say, hey, I, I appreciate it, but mm -hmm. thank you, and it's time for me to go. So that's where we are right now. Uh, you had asked for your release from Impact Wrestling. It seems like yes. there's no ill will Oh, there, absolutely. No, none at all. You don't want to bury uh, anybody? No, I can't Nobody? bury <laughs> no. Nobody? No, no, sir. I can't bury anybody. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that, you know, Impact Wrestling's grown so much and, you know, there's so much talent that comes through there and you see the NXT crew and you see AEW and NWA and everything. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, it's easy to get lost in the mix, you know, sure. and then where we were at creatively I feel you know from the tag team uh, parting to just kind of fit in where I'm at and in the process you know I'm just told to get in the best shape that I can be in and stay prepared and that's what I do and, and I'm just waiting and waiting and, 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 and I'm watching the growth of Impact Wrestling and, and the, the competitor in me is like man I absolutely love everything about Impact Wrestling I can't I can't say oh man those son of a guns ruined my wrestling career because, mm -hmm. you know, creative, I, under, I think for the first time ever, we, we hear like on the indies a lot is, you know, it's just business. It's, yeah. it, it, I, I think, I think finally for the first time in 20 years, I understand, hey, it's just business, which also in turn is, is the same way with me. It's just business. You know, I want to, I want to see myself do better. Uh, I feel that for 20 years, that I've busted it and I've given everything that I have to get where I'm at. And the competitor in me has to step up and say, hey, I know that I can play on the field. And I know, I know by, by asking my release 
that, that put, puts the, the ball in my court to do what I need to do to go where I want to go. And where I want to go is to continue to prove to the world, whether it be on an airplane across the world uh, at New Japan Wrestling, or whether it be for GCW, or whether it be uh, MLW, they talk about the door is open. Well, I'm ready to step through. Uh, you know, NWA, I would love to line this fist up across that ring from, say, a Trevor Murdoch. Yeah. You know, imagine that matchup. I would love the opportunity to get in there at an AEW and say, hey, you know, I'm still one of the best heavyweights in the world. As far as outworking me, I, I feel that not many is going to do it. I don't, I don't have the best body. I'll give you that. I may not be seven foot tall, but what I do have is the best right hand in wrestling. I'm not trying to cut a promo on you, but that's what got me here, is this right hand. And Scott Demore himself said, it doesn't matter if you, you do this here and you walk away, you're going back to work the next week and you're gonna show up and you're gonna kick ass again. Well, this is my work now. There is no weld. This is my work and this is what I wanna do. This right hand I wanna drop, whether it be Impact Wrestling, WWE even, or AEW, or anybody that puts me on the field. I've always been a competitor. I've always bet on myself. And, and that simply is all it was. There's no, no hard feelings there. You know, I, I want to be a part of Impact Wrestling. I just want to come to work. That was it. So if, if a situation presented itself at Impact was like, hey, we got something for you creatively, you'd be open to going back there? 100 percent. I, I would definitely love to walk through the doors of Impact Wrestling again one day uh, if creatively that, that it would work out. I feel that, you know, I, I could have a heck of a singles run with, say, against a moose. You know, if you go back and watch myself and Sammy Callahan uh, mm -hmm. mid last year, uh, we, we did really well together. There's so much there. I would love to have the opportunity to wrestle a Willie Mack. Uh, I would love to uh, had to say, hey, Josh Alexander and Larry D. I, I think I think you know he's one of the best, if not the best, in the world. He and Jonathan Gresham are some of my maybe my top two favorite. But man, I know that I can go with those guys, and I, I just want the opportunity to prove it. You mentioned Sammy Callahan. Obviously, he runs a successful promotion of his own. So, I mean, you ain't, you ain't hurting for work, I would imagine. I'd imagine no. you're still getting plenty of dates. Of course. I, I'm staying busy. And, 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 and speaking of Sammy Callahan, I'm glad that you brought him up because without Sammy Callahan, like, really say, hey, man, you know, I think that you can wrestle with Impact Wrestling. And I remember I got a screenshot of an interview that Sammy done. It's like, hey, who should Impact Wrestling bring in? And he suggested me. And I can't be more blessed and thankful for opportunities that Sammy gave me because I feel without that revolver platform on the Impact Twitch uh, collab there, then there would be, I wouldn't sit here talk about my release and asking for my release from Impact and my wrestling career for you and everybody else. And man, since his injury, he's just, <laughs> it's oh, like 24-7. Yeah. That's yeah. all he does he's, now. He's a, he's a wild man. He's like, hey, hey, hey. He's, all, yeah. he's wide open. That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. he is. he's a tireless promoter, but... Uh, we talked about how, how your physical condition improved, and yes. specifically, once you got signed with Impact, you were in the gym nonstop, of bettering course. yourselves. Did you get any feedback on that? I mean, it became oh. evident to everybody. Yeah, everyone loved it, and they, they were so proud of me. I think, I think what I liked the most killing like, your gimmick, though. <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> the gimmick. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> throw him out there, but he's like, man, you, you worked yourself out of a gimmick, you know, you worked your whatever. But I, you know. Uh, but really and truly, I think that we have to put our, our, our mental and our physical first. Yeah. And I knew where I was at uh, in the ring at 386 pounds. And, and I knew that when I start to get blown up and, and like um, you go back to a television, we had this triple XL gear and I ah, real quick in my my uh, my Chono belt pops off of, you know, yeah. comes loose. And, and it was that point. It's like, man, you know you've got an opportunity given to you that, that many people would kill for. They would die to be here, and, and you're not putting forth where you need to be. It was that day forward that I said, Larry D has to change if I'm gonna stay where I'm at, and if I wanna to continue to be who I say I want to be, then I've got to put the work in. And from that day forward, man, my life changed again because I had to put my health forward and, and I feel great. I'm the best I've ever been. I, I feel wonderful, I'm, 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 I'm agile. So yeah, that's why I, I'm ready to run and ready to go. So I feel like we're gonna Tarantino this a little bit. We're going back to other points in time. Of course. A few months after that, I went to the, the Lexington Ice Center, saw you wrestle there. I was so excited Impact yeah. was there. 
got to do some in-person interviews and then the pandemic hit like like a week or two after i mean it it had already hit but it hit us it was it was let's see i did my first live set with with crowd uh, impact this was was like the second week of march and then i want to say it was the very next week is when everything really went down how did that change you from your shoot job to your your indie dates to your impact schedule. Well, it, it helped. It helped me. It I really that did. With a lot of people, it, it, seems it, like. it helped me in the fact that you know I knew that the other indies were down. It helped me in the fact that you know travel as far as air travel was was, was hard to bring certain talent in. Sure. You know, so I could drive in from Central Kentucky to Nashville, Tennessee, no problem. You know, there would be times that I would drive there and would I have my essential uh, paper on my email, I'm, you know, in case I got pulled over, you yeah. know, hey, I'm, I'm a essential worker. And, and that's how serious it was at that time. And, and, and I swear to you, we're talking about Walking Dead off camera. Um, <laughs> I felt like I was in, in the Walking Dead, like I'm not supposed to be out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it was, I'll definitely never forget that. Uh, but I think it, it pushed me more because now I'm getting the TV time. That, that somebody else is not getting in. And I, you know, once, once I got on that, that TV screen and once I seen how, how wrestling really, you know, how wrestling is, it's not, we're not going in the back of a, you know, just a little short hallway there, you know, it's, it's right. You got agents, you got producers, you got everything's the way it should be. And, and I can't help but to thank Impact Wrestling for allowing me to see that because I help it and bring it back to uh, my students back this way and help them understand next level. So you're putting a tag team with, with Ace Romero, yes. Black Cell. How'd you feel about that? Uh, at first, we, we didn't, me and Ace really didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. We, we knew each other from Dayton, Ohio, every Wednesday night, you know, when he was up there. And uh, we wrestled a few times. As far as the tag team, from my understanding, the tag team was only supposed to kind of be uh, that weekend, first weekend thing. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah. But from my understanding, that's how it was. And then it was D'Lo on the, uh, on the live feed. It says, you know, they're, they're, they're three times the size of everyone in the ring. And they're, it's like they're, they're three <laughs> times largest. You know, they should, they're triple XL. Well, I'll call them triple And then from yeah. there, you know, it stuck. And we were then triple XL. I would have loved for the split to have happened because you got too small. <laughs> for AC, right, he's yeah. like, he's like, this is this is not okay. Yeah, this nah. is, we're not gonna be XL. Yeah, you can go back and watch a really fat AC Romero <laughs> and a really fat Larry D from our Wrestling Revolver show, and and we got down though. It was really fun. And I mean, th- that's the thing. Like both of you are such incredible in ring performers, and that is a lot easier said than done. It is for, for heavyweight wrestlers. It is. And I mean, that was something unique because I mean, on the surface, visually, you look at you guys and be like. We're going to see some shoulder blocks, maybe some big splashes if we're lucky. But that, that's not the case if you've right. ever seen you two wrestle. No, not at all. I like to push the pedal. Yeah. AC likes to go viral. Yes, you know? he does. Uh, I think it was the guy in New York that yeah. he did the big so, counts to. So sometimes he does do some shoulder blocks and they send somebody about six yeah, rows you know, deep. He, he hit yeah. Sports Center with that. And, you yeah. know, I was happy for him. And, but, but, yeah, I loved getting in there with AC. I loved being able to mix it up with him. And, and we had different ideas, and we made them come together. And, you know, he's, he's the big guy to the middle. For the first time, I was a smaller guy in the tag team. <laughs> yeah. So usually that's something completely foreign to me was being the smaller guy. And, and it allowed me to push the pedal and, and do things with guys that, that like to push the pedal and, and, and that I never thought I would get to do. And that was, that was something else. So when he asked for his release, like, were you all, I mean, I don't, I don't know what your relationship was like. Did he give you a heads up? Like, hey, uh, yeah, man, because yeah, yeah. you all have been off TV for quite a while at that point. I, I knew that he was frustrated, mm-hmm. and, and I understood. And, and he, he had told me that he had made the decision. And I, I told him, I said, listen, he was so sorry. And I said, don't ever, ever be sorry for making a choice that you feel benefits your life. And that, that was a big now, I think people would say, oh, man, you should be so pissed off or you should be so upset. And then I can't be upset because I'm not in his shoes. You know, uh, I could be upset if 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 I begged him to stay and then and then it was it was my turn and say, you know what? Screw this. Now we want to leave. And I can't do that. I, I wish him the best. I think that he's super talented and, and uh, I know that he's doing well today. So, you know, I, I was I was in shambles. I, I didn't know what we were doing, where we were going, but I did know that. If ever I was prepared for a singles run, it would be there. 
yeah. you know, because like you say, I was in the gym every day. And, you know, like you, people get tired of probably my motivation, uh, <laughs> whatever. But I do that for self, uh, you know, my self check. And, and it makes me feel better. And I can't tell you how many people have said, hey, you know, your, your every days have really made me get up and, and go. And, and they would send me, hey, I lost 20 pounds. And thanks to you for, you know, just getting your motivation and seeing you go and work hard. So that, that alone makes it makes it worth it to me. So also during the pandemic, people got creative with how they make content. Out came Wrestle House. Yes. yes. What was that experience like? Because you had a very unique one there. Man, you, got, you got, had a bit of a rebirth there. As I well. tell you, I, I, I did, and, and it was it was it was scary. It was fun. It was different. Uh, and, and when I got the script, I was like, Oh man. I'm, wait a minute! Like I'm falling in love on screen with another. How am I, <laughs> yeah. How am I gonna? How am I gonna? How's Paige gonna feel about this? How did she feel about it? Ah, uh, you know, she gave me some hard time about it, but yeah. she's man, she's always been so supportive, and, and 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 I give her a hard time, but you know, through things like that, I, most wives probably, hey, screw, no way, yeah, you're not you're not doing that. But she was like, hey, you know, that's your job. That's what you do. I know they're not really falling in love <laughs> with her, and it was it was. I can't I can't be more blessed because you know a lot of that could have went south. How was the process of that? Like how how many was that? Like one day, an hour, like two days? Well, like, how we do you feel there, that? We were there for three days or two or three days, and you know we we had a, we were long days, long long days. We were there probably thirteen hours. Whose yeah. house is that? Is that Demore's? No, <laughs> whose is that? I, who's I don't that? think it's Demore's. Who's you know, there was, there was some, some little place down there. <laughs> I just want to say, I love you. Like, that ain't you know, Demore's house. I don't think it's Demore's <laughs> place. We ain't got that place. But, you know, it was, it was Dreamers, I believe, on season really? one. Season one, wasn't it Dreamers? Oh, I just didn't know if it... Like from a work or a shoot perspective, like as, oh, like you know on MTV Cribs, you know they would have the worked houses on MTV Cribs back in the day. Well, then we should have went to Vegas because Lawrence <laughs> D has a really nice pad, way yeah. better than this right now. Oh man, so the, you're you're off TV for for several months before you pop back up as Lawrence. Of course. How's that feeling for you? Because I mean, quite frankly, I I was in Nashville for Slammiversary. That show comes and goes, and I'm like. Where was Larry? Right. Like, I even messaged you. I was like, hey, man, you good? Yeah, it got to the point that I was getting, are you still a part of Impact? I asked you that straight up. Well, yeah. not just you. It was just, you know, it's, it's just, are you still a part of Impact? Hey, are, yes, I'm still a part of Impact. You know, I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm waiting my turn, I guess, you know. And I feel that in the process, I just didn't know where I was going, you know. And, and then when Lawrence D rode around, that was, it, was, it was exciting to say the least because I had been off television for six months and now it's, it's, hey, this is the relaunch. Hey, here we go. And you know, I, I'm out, I'm buying the gear, I'm ready to go. And then, you know, unfortunately it just wasn't in the, in the creative for Lawrence D or Larry D to uh, get where you needed to be, I guess. Well, I mean, completely separate of impact. You got a lot of stuff going on. Like behind us, you have right. a lot of stuff going on. Yes. I walked into here, you got a bar opening and you started to walk me through a lot of the ideas. And I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I mean, this is a fairly local area for me, about 40 minutes. I love to see anything like this grow. And we'll talk about how you've helped Kentucky wrestling grow in general. This is another step for that, I think. Right. Yeah. It's, it's great. This here is something that my wife and I, and my brother and his wife stumbled upon and, you know, we, we took and looked at it and said, you know, can it, can we do it first, you know, and, and, and my, my brother lived in Florida and he's moved up here and, and the question, is, yeah, we can do this. Uh, we, we crunched some numbers and, and where we was at and then decided like, man, what are we going to theme this? And, and we got thinking like there's no professional wrestling themed yeah. anything here. So. I wanted to use this as a place for you to come watch Monday Night Raw, for you to come watch Impact. You're going to be able to come watch Dynamite. You know, you're going to be able to come talk wrestling on Monday nights. We're going to do what's called Monday Night Wars from, say, 6 until 8 o'clock or 7.50. <laughs> you're going to just, you know, family feud style, and we're going to ask wrestling questions, and then you're going to win all kinds of uh, stuff at the end of the night and, and just a good time. And then, you know what? all kinds of wrestling events here with my school and other things and then we'll have uh, some live music and just a, like I say a really good time. I love it. I love it. I mean I I have just wanted to see wrestling in Kentucky grow so much because it's got history. ICW with, with the Poffos, Randy Savage 
you know, The Undertaker returned at Freedom Hall in Louisville. And then, of course, there was that great OVW class. And until you started to promote around here, there was not a lot of independent wrestling. Right. Like, because we had talked off the air, a lot of places preferred to run River Towns because yes. they could just run Ohio or Indiana. WWE didn't run TV here for a while. And now you're here and you're you're bringing in like a lot of names that are popping up on TV. Of course. You're on TV. I mean, yeah. you're really increasing the profile out here. Well, I feel that, that wrestling's been in the area at least so wrestling, you know, yeah. and it's not really had that next level feel. And, and not only as far as the next level feel, but, you know, it's, it's all a part of teaching to me it is, you know, backstage with anyone that comes through. It's all a part of like how I can make you better. You know, I've given my life to this. I started when I was in my 16, 17 years old. And, you know, how can I make you better through what I've went through? You know, not, not good, not went through as in good or bad, just, just in my journey. You know, how can I make your journey at 18 to 23 years old a little bit simpler than my journey at 18 to 23 to get a contract years later? And, you know, as far as the wrestling locally, you know, you might have your your typical, you know, Billy that works at the, the metal fab shop down the street might be in the main event of yeah. the town. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel that we can build talent, we can build stars, and we can show them exactly how it works and help you get up the scale. Hopefully, we bring the right person in mm -hmm. that wrestles with you or sees your match, and then you can go your way, and they, they're like, hey, who is that? Yeah. And then there you go. That's, it, that's what I'm hoping. And I've seen some of the people you brought in, like Jake Chris, who I think of the world of. Mm -hmm. Again, Tracy Smothers, Chris Michaels, who has had experience every single place that yes. there's ever been. To the point to where WWE brought him in to coach a couple times. Like, yes. There's so many different people that you have developed connections with and are still somewhat local to here. Of course. That you can point to and say you can be successful like, like they are as well. Is there anybody like specifically that you look at and you'd love to bring in? Oh my gosh, there's so many people that I, I always like to bring Bob Evans in. Oh, Bruce Bob Evans, as, yeah, yeah. As far as like teaching. Uh, and, and someone that I would want to bring in again it's just to teach alone would be crazy steep. Okay, we had him yeah. in We had him in Maysville, and, and one of the things that I love about Steve the most at Impact, we would always go to tapings, and then we would go back, and you know, we would just shoot the breeze about the business and tell stories, but he's so smart with what he does, and, and when he was talking to my guys after the show, I was like, man, I would love to have him for a weekend to drop knowledge you know, on, on my group. And, uh, but... I mean, there's so many. I mean, gosh, that's an on-the-spot one. I mean, I feel sure. <laughs> I feel that like I, w I would want an I would want like an Alex Zane maybe. Ah, uh, uh, in a fair. I mean, I know he lives in Florida now, yes. but fairly local. I think that Alex Zane one could tell you how to travel, how to you know, because you know those guys fly around. Those injuries come, of and you know, there's a little, uh, and, and the business has moved, so these guys are so much quicker and so much smaller now. I feel that someone like Alex Zane, who is not afraid to hit you hard, mm -hmm. but he can also fly very well on top of his travel. And, and jump his, over a Dodge Neon. Yeah, I just want the man to get signed by Taco Bell. Yes. You know, really, he deserves He's it. getting some freebies. I yeah. see that. He's I, it's good. That's a start. Yes. It is. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Maysville. That melted my heart. That's right. where I'm from. That's where I was right. born. There was not wrestling there outside of some mud show stuff that I told you about beforehand. Right. Like for decades, uh -huh. I mean for decades, no, like the venues there wouldn't run anything. Fortunately, there's a great place out there that's interested in, in doing that stuff. They're interested in making a little bit of money, which I appreciate them doing. You can't, yeah, you can't knock that. So, I mean, you're going when you go into a new place. Like, what are some of the things that you look at? Because I mean, there's got to be a million questions. Right. Well, some of the things that I look at one is like the overall. What is the venue? Is it cool? Is it is it somewhere that I would want to go? And then when I, I, you know, Nate Gnarly, who we yeah. spoke about, he had, he had turned me on to the Maysville Brewery there. And, and evidently they played in a band together. And, oh, that's, and cool. that's how I went up there. And I seen that they had a bar and they had this really nice restaurant. So the first thing we did at 300 pounds is I'm going to see what, you know, these Philly cheesesteaks are like. Yeah, and of course. So I tried this Philly cheesesteak and it was one of the better ones that I had. <laughs> and they had me hooked. And, and Brandon's such a good guy there. And he, he means well. They, they're the owners of the restaurant, they mean well. They want to do well. And they want to see more people come through the doors. And they felt that wrestling would. And, and they were so happy that first night. And now we're going back February the 19th and hopefully we'll do better yeah love it and shout out to nate gnarly who i went to, went to high school with haven't Nasty talked to him in years but 
uh, went to high school with him, and that makes me happy. I wanted to send you a personal thank yeah. you for bringing back wrestling Absolutely. where I grew up from because it was it was non-existent there <laughs> for decades. Yeah. So as we as we wrap up the MLWs, the NWA, WWE, uh, the AEW, I think I mentioned them. Uh, any company. I just want to come to work. Yeah. I just want to come to work. That's it. You know. What would you say to them besides you want to come to work? Well, like, what I would say to them is, it, it, besides I want to come to work, is the fact that when I do come to work, you're going to get the very best me anytime. You're always going to have that positive, I'm here, ready. I'm the first there, last to leave. That's just my father in me. You're going to get one of the best heavyweights, if not the best heavyweight going today, that's unsigned. I want to say that right now. I think you could put me versus Keith Lee, and you're going to sell out any venue. I think you put me versus Trevor Murdoch, sell out any venue. You know, Alex Hammerstone. How, how, I'd that's love, a match. I'd love a to have match. that match, wouldn't you? Uh, how about myself versus Jacob Fatu? I think that would be great. I think Impact Wrestling, let's even open that door back up. I said it earlier. How about Moose? How about Josh Alexander? How about Richie Swan? You know, anybody. I, I, want, I just want to come to work. I want to put forth my best right hand and just prove to the world that I'm still one of the best in the world. Larry D., it's always a pleasure, man. Until next time, guys, we're out.